We're talking Judd Comics with Lachlan Judd. How are you doing, Lachlan? I'm pretty good. Have you um, enjoyed your day today? I'm absolutely loving it here today. I've sold a bunch of stuff, met a lot of great people. I've even drawn a couple of things that aren't terrible, so yeah. Not a bad day so far. That's really good. That's really good. So, um, in regards to your history of um, artistry, yeah. when did that start? Ah, uh, geez. I've been drawing since, I don't know, five, six. Um, I sort of drew all through primary school and then spent most of high school just hiding out in the art room and stuff. Ended up going to university to do um, animation, majored in 2D animation, then graduated right in the recession and ended up in TV as an editor instead. And I didn't pick up a pen or a pencil for a few years there, yeah. So in your history regarding television, uh, if you're able to, to, to mention it at all, um, what did you work on? Um, I worked for a regional um, broadcaster in Canberra, basically Sevens Regional Arm. And I did everything there from editing news, switching news to shooting, um, shooting news, shooting commercials, editing commercials. I did, if you can name it, I did it basically. If it was production task outside of actually producing things and being on the phone with clients, then yeah, I did it. So proper end-to-end -end of everything. End-to-end -end of everything. I mean, that's what's really great about regional TV is that you kind of get a chance to do whatever you want. Like, it's like primary school for the industry. Everyone gets a chance to do everything. Yeah. So moving on, um, what made you go back to um, the, the artistry and, and drawing? Okay, um, I was working... I graduated film school. I came up here to do after stuff. And then I was working as a freelance cameraman, editor, and I was editing some terrible corporate video for this big accounting firm and it was just full of, you know, synergy and wank words. And it was just full of this corporate junk and I'm like... Just was, cheese basically. Just, yeah, just cheese. And I was like, I sort of just pushed myself away from the desk and I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to draw an ant eating a guy. So I drew a spaceman getting eaten by a space ant and then posted that to Facebook and a friend of mine showed that to a friend of his who ran a skate and lowbrow art shop down in Canberra and she said it was pretty rad and that I should make more of them and that if I made more then she'd maybe sell a few of them so I was like okay and yeah I started drawing for money at that point. That was sort of, I mean I'd been drawing off and on a bit up until that point but that was sort of the point where I was like, oh wow, people will pay money for this rather than just get 20 Facebook likes from my friends if I throw it on my own personal timeline or whatever. So um, from that, we now have all these eclectic uh, posters that we got uh, that we can see here. Yeah. Uh, what's some of the inspirations of them? Like, could you describe a few? Well, I guess um, I like I love the old school comic aesthetic. I love flat color in things. Um, but I think that all stems from a childhood of, you know, my parents would always get me Asterix books and Tintin books. And when I was about 10, my older brother started introducing me to uh, Hong Kong action flicks, you know, on VHS and stuff. Like, I was watching, you know, Jackie Chan's stuff just as people started to learn about that in the West. Like, my brother went away to uni and he learned about this stuff and brought it back. And I was watching John Woo's stuff. and. You know, seeing Chow Yun Fat leap through the air sideways, firing a Beretta in each hand, had like a big effect on me when I was 11. You know, it was about the coolest thing ever. Um, and you know, everyone thought it was the coolest thing ever because it was, and then it got played out. But anyway, it was just great. And so that, and I guess a, a childhood of lifetime of, you know, pulp sci-fi, and whatever I could get my hands on, that all sort of gets ground up and goes into these things. Um, been a big, big, big fan of exploitation cinema for a long time. Um, so, just absolute low rent, um, unworthy films, basically. Schlocky stuff, uh, you know, stuff like Crank, Hobo with a Shotgun, if you want more recent examples, but even earlier stuff, um, there's an amazing movie that came out in the 80s called Street Trash. And it's the most ludicrous, offensive thing that anyone has ever made. It's about a guy who runs a bottler who finds a whole bunch of, like, this Depression-era wine, and he starts selling it to the local hobos, and it causes people to melt when they drink it. Um, 
it's absolutely ridiculous. There's a scene where a guy is having a piss through a wall and a guy cuts his dick off and then a bunch of dudes play keep away with the guy's dick. It's ridiculous. It's one of the, it's one of the most bizarre things you've ever seen. And that's, that's like a tame bit in the movie. It's, it's off the chain. So I love that stuff. The more lurid, the more crass and dreadful it is, the better, you know? That's what's great about exploitation cinema is it sort of speaks to that, I don't know if it's okay to like this part of your brain, which is great. So a little bit of that bleeds through into my work, but I'm like, not as heartless as all that. So I sort of go for more goofy kind of, I don't know. It all comes back to comedy, I guess, for me. Like, it has to be funny, it has to tell a little bit of a story if I'm gonna draw it. Yeah. Uh, your company's called the Judd Comics. Yeah. Have you, or do you have any comics available now? Or? Nothing at the moment that's published. A few in the works. Right now I'm doing pencils and inks for an Australian creator, and we're going to start pitching that pretty soon to a bunch of publishers. Um, I've done a few things here and there, like, um, you know, just colour flatting, absolute grunt work for other indie publications and stuff, but uh, nothing that I can really name check right here that, you know, my name would be up there in lights or anything. It was literally just, you know, okay, we need sky colour, we need, okay, that brown, that brown, that brown, you know, just laying it out so that people who actually do colour for real money can actually, you know, have something that they can work with. If I can save them a couple of hours a page, then, you know, it's money in everyone's pockets, you know? Yeah. So you, you got anything um, in the pipeline for the future at all? Absolutely. Um, in addition to, you know, more prints, of course, and whatever commissions come my way, still got to eat, still got to pay my rent. Um, I do have a comic in the works, which, I don't know, should I talk about it? Why not? It's, um, it's about a frat boy who finds a magic polo shirt mixed in with his dry cleaning by mistake. So now whenever Chaz pops his collar and hollers, he becomes the collar and he fights crime with epic bro downs and Smirnoff Ice. It's gonna be the dumbest thing that anyone has ever read and it should be pretty rad. I actually look forward to reading that. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> and with, with that, Lachlan, thank you very much. Great to meet you. Cheers. Thanks. No worries. <laughs>